Hey, this is Clara, and today I'm going to be talking about different Shakespeare editions, if you're reading for pleasure, or if you're reading to study, or if you're involved in a production. First off, I'm going to tell you what I don't suggest you use. What I don't suggest is something like this, which I'm currently actually using, which is a complete works that is old and musty, but the main reason that I don't like it is because there are no notes. The text goes completely to the margin on either side, and it can be a little bit difficult to read. Everyone's names are abbreviated. What I don't like about this or about basic online editions is that you don't get any support. There are no footnotes, there are no endnotes. If you need support, it's not there, and if you like what you're reading, uh, there's no extras to help you enjoy it more. So what I do suggest is if you are new to reading Shakespeare, the Folger Shakespeare Library is an excellent little set of books. These are intended for students or first-time readers of Shakespeare. They have the text of the play on one side, and then a whole page of notes, often including uh, woodcuts or prints on the other side. They're very clear, and at the beginning of every scene, they have a little summary of that scene. So, Valentine learns, with Speed's help, that the letter Sylvia had him write conveying her love to admire was intended for himself. Get the gist of what's going to happen in the scene and you know what to expect. It's nice. Especially if you struggle to understand what's going on. Yeah? So here's how much of the book is actually the play, and then the other ends are introduction and conclusion stuff. Um, the introduction has a lot of really nice stuff. It talks about Shakespeare's life, how to read Shakespeare if you're feeling intimidated, there's information about Shakespeare's theater at the time and how the plays were published, and a lot of great stuff for if you are writing papers in high school or even college about Shakespeare and his time. It's good to have the basics all in one place. If you want to study more in depth, either because you are a scholar or because you are working on a production of a play, there are four editions that I recommend as really strong candidates for that. The first is the Oxford Shakespeare. Again, they have quite a bit of introductory and conclusion material, and on a particular page there are footnotes, but the footnotes are quite extensive. So here's our first page, there's about 15 lines of text, but then there's like in fine print a lot of footnote material as well. These editions have a lot more of a scholarly introduction, so it won't tell you about the life of Shakespeare it reads more like a work of literary criticism. So the introduction talks about uh, the source texts. So the, the first section is from Boccaccio to Shakespeare, which is talking about the folklore and source text for Shakespeare's play. It talks about genre issues, deconstruction of the title of the play. It just, it's got a lot of information, but it's of a, quite a different kind than the here's what Shakespeare's theater would have been like introduction that the Folger gives. So if you feel like you have graduated beyond Folger and introductions talking about the life of Shakespeare, I think this might be a really good choice. The new Cambridge Shakespeare is a really nice addition as well. They have a similar structure of, of footnotes and introductions and appendices. I remember them being particularly good with character charts for the history plays when I was working on a project in grad school. They also recently redesigned their covers. They used to all look like this, and now they look like this. So much prettier. The RSC Shakespeare editions are also really strong. They have a bit of a different feel to them. They definitely feel as though they are aimed towards the common person in a way that the academic rigor of the Oxford and the Cambridge are not, but even the way they're laid out, they have sort of inviting covers to the editions. They look almost like play posters. And notably, they have strong introductions and conclusions and uh, footnotes, but there's a strong bias towards performance-oriented notes. So you might get notes about how this scene was performed in a particular production, and they're really good. It's really nice. The sort of unquestioned best is the Arden. It's huge. Um, so sort of a massive amount of text there. Often a single page will have a huge number of footnotes. 
less, sometimes more, but often a, a lot. Um, it really gives you a lot to play with if you're directing or if you are reading or if you are just, you know, wanting to eke out every drop of goodness from this play. The introduction has a lot, covers a lot of ground given how much introduction there is, including but not limited to a character chart and distribution of lines, who is, which characters are in which scenes, which is super helpful if you're directing. There's discussion of the use of scansion in the play. In the end material, they have like sheet music for all the songs. So it's just a lot of cool stuff. I will say, although the art in Shakespeare is the best for scholarly work for the individual editions, like, do not get their complete works. Their complete works have no notes. Um, it's like going back to this kind of deal again. Like it's better edited and it looks nicer, but zero footnotes, which is sort of the whole point of getting the art in. So if you're looking for a complete works, I recommend the uh, Norton or the Oxford, which are the same text, or you can get the Cambridge has a good one and uh, Riverside is nice. I have the Pelican as well, but don't get the Arden. Those are my suggestions. I like all of these, but I basically like Shakespeare. So if you have other favorites, I'd love to hear about them. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye!